Hello everyone, welcome back to the Riverwood Aquatics YouTube channel. Today we've got something quite exciting. We're going to be scaping a nano aquarium. So um, we've recently bought on a new brand in store here, which is Superfish. Um, they've got some really cool sort of entry level uh, aquascaping um, aquariums and equipment, lights and things like that. So today we're going to be um, scaping this um, Superfish Scaper Cube 15. It's a little nano tank. 25 centimeters by 25 centimeters by 25 centimeter cube. Uh, it comes as a sort of almost complete kit. The only thing it's missing is a heater, but um, that's not an issue. You can just add a heater if you need to, depending on what species of uh, fish or shrimp you want to be keeping in here. Um, so we're going to go ahead and unbox this, see what's inside, and um, we'll get started. Okay, so let's have a look inside. It comes quite well packaged, so you should find the aquariums in perfect condition. I can see straight away the tank is a really nice quality for the price as well because these are kind of entry level kind of tanks but I mean as a as a seasoned aquascaper I'd be more than happy with this tank. The silicon is very minimal, clear silicon, the glass is really well made, really well cut, lines up nicely. So yeah see what we've got inside. A, a background so you can either have it white or black that just sticks onto the back of the tank. That's really handy to have. We've got the LED this is the Scaper Cube LED 15. Uh, let's see if we've got any information on this. High powered LED, 12 watts, 269 power for excellent plant growth, two year warranty. Yeah, so um, really nice LEDs. I actually know a little bit about these, so I'm excited to get one sorted on this tank. And what we've got here, this is the Colombo Flora Grow Plant Fertilizer. Actually, get quite a big bottle with it, so that should last you a decent amount of time. It's just a plant fertilizer, keep your plants going healthy. This is the filter that it comes with. It's a hang on the back filter, which is especially great in a tank this size because it means you're not taking up valuable water volume space with, a, with an in tank filter. So it just hangs on the back of the tank and um, yeah, keeps, keeps everything nice and cycled. And, Fish happy and healthy. What else we've got in here? Just some leaflets, uh, leaflet on the flora grow, and the leaflet on the, uh, the equipment. What you've got inside. Should also, under the bottom here, yeah, this is a little base mat and that keeps the glass protected. So when you put it on your shelf, you can have it. Keeps the glass nice and protected and level. Keeps it nice and safe. So we're going to go ahead and open the light and get that on there. These lights are really, really nice. They're sort of the minimalist aquascaping design, very similar to the tank. Um, you've probably seen lights similar to this from Twinstar and Jahiros. Um, try and do this carefully. Whoops. <laughs> that comes nicely packaged. Lovely sort of um, brushed aluminium finish. Quite a long lead on it. And we should have some legs in here somewhere. Let's see if I can stand this on here without dropping it. So in the box we have these clear acrylic legs. Really nice. Got some subtle Superfish branding on there. But I think they just slot into the side, like so. You have to push it in, it's a nice tight fit, so it means that it's not gonna be all loose and wobbly, which is quite reassuring. It feels quality to hold. There we go, and this should just sit nicely on the rim of the tank like that. So let's go ahead and plug it in. Uh, Superfish do do a um, LED controller, which you can set time intervals, sunrise and sunsets, things like that. Or you can just plug it into a standard timer plug and have it come on uh, throughout the day whenever you want it to come on. So we'll just plug this in. And there we go. The light is on. See, it's quite a nice uh, bright light. And it's going to illuminate this tank lovely without being too overly powered. So hopefully we'll get... Um, Nice plant growth, but without algae, which is what we want. 
Um, yeah, this is uh, looks really, really nice. You can see from the side here, you've got these acrylic super clear feet that just sit nicely on the rim of the tank. And it's really minimalist, sort of sleek design. It's going to look super nice, like in the corner of a room or something, where it all planted out with greenery. With this very nice, sleek little light over the top. All right, so next we'll unbox the filter. Uh, this one's got a little seal on it, so I'll just find some scissors to open it. Okay, we've got like the pipe work here. This is a really cool feature of this one. It's got a built-in surface skimmer. So you get that crystal clear water surface. Okay, pull it out. It's got a little instruction leaflet in there. We might need that. <laughs> Nicely packaged again. Okay, so there it is. Consists of a little pump. You've got the cartridge filter in the, in the side there. Uh, we will assemble this. I think when we're ready to do it, but that's the idea. You just hang it. You can see here, this hangs on the back of the tank like that. Just means there's less equipment in the tank. It's actually quite an attractive little thing, you know? Blends in quite nicely. Okay, so all the equipment's ready. Um, we decided with the filter that we're not going to run the skimmer part of it, just because it's quite big for a tank this tiny. Uh, but you could absolutely run it, there's no reason why not, but this just makes it a little bit more sleek, it's going to be easier to hide that filter uh, in there. We're also going to add a heater to this, because we're actually scaping this for a customer. Um, they just want a small tank uh, for a little better fish, um, it's going to be nice and easy to maintain. Um, so yeah, we're going to be, um, we're going to be escaping it with them in mind, and um, they're going to keep it at the shop for a little while, let it get established, and then come pick it up when it's when it's all ready. So it's going to be nice and established to go into their uh, into their living space. So um, yeah, let's get started. Uh, we're going to start off with the substrate. It's always a good place to start. Um, we're, we're thinking nature aquarium, so we want to do lots of nice planting. Um, so we're going to start off with some aquarium soil. We're going to go for the Tropica aquarium soil. This is a really good all-round substrate, so you can just use it just like gravel. You can just pour it in and you can plant into it. Um, doesn't make too much mess as long as you fill it up nice and carefully. Um, and yeah, that's going to soften the water slightly and um, also provide the nutrients and the growing medium for the plants. So let's add some of this. So because we've got this filter um, in the corner here, we don't want to bank the soil up too much in that corner, uh, but we can put a little bit deeper in this, this opposite corner. Something really satisfying about getting your hands in amongst the soil and moving it around. This feels like you're connecting with the aquascape. I think we need a little bit more just to make it a little bit deeper all round. In a tank this size you don't want to go too deep, obviously you want to try and maximise the water volume, although we are going to have hardscape in here as well. So ramping it up towards the back, it not only gives the taller plants that you have at the back, that generally have bigger roots, more to root into, but it also creates a sense of depth. So as you look at it straight onto the tank, it's going to look like the tank is much deeper because so you, you can see more of the substrate at the back. Okay, that's the substrate in. We've used nearly a whole bag of a, a, a three litre or three kilo bag of soil there. So if you are thinking of one of these cube 15s, uh, then one three litre bag will be plenty, um, which, is, which is good. Another good thing about a nano tank, they're just they're quite easy on the budget as well, which is great. All right, so we are out in the hardscape tent and we're going to look for some nice rocks um, to put into this scape. So this is a really good choice, Siriu stone. 
can see all the nice details in there. That's going to really enhance the sense of scale in a smaller tank. If you've got lots of nice small details, um, it really makes the tank and the skate feel bigger than it is. So I really like these stones. I think we'll take a few of these inside and um, see what we can do with them. So we're also going to use a piece of wood in the tank. This is all riverwood pieces. There's, there's some lovely interesting pieces in here. Different tones, textures, um, loads of different nano pieces. Uh, what else could we use? There's manzanita twigs, that'd be really nice. This slim wood in here. Uh, so we're going to have a little look around outside and try and find some suitable pieces. Okay, so we've just been out and had a little rummage through our hardscape area out there. We've got a big selection of wood here and rocks. So it was quite easy to find something, hopefully, that's going to work. This is a piece of dark moor root. So it's like red moor root, but it's got a darker finish. And actually, um, it's less prone to the fluffy sort of white fungus you get in the early stages when you normally use red moor root. So it's quite a nice uh, option for that. Um, so, I mean, it looks quite big next to the tank. So I'm hoping this is going to fit in quite nicely and be a nice sort of statement centerpiece for the tank. So we're going to lift off the light see if it fits in. We may have to remove a branch or two from the back. See if we can get it in. Put the light on. Yeah, that actually looks great. Uh, hopefully you can, hopefully you can see in here. So we've got like a, a at roots coming down here, then we've got some more branchy, interesting stemmy pieces coming off here. And we've also got this nice little bit of wood coming out the top of the tank, which kind of adds to the whole dimension of it. And I think with just some uh, nice Sirius stone rocks around the base of the wood, um, we're going to have a really nice, easy to do uh, hardscape for this uh, little 25 centimetre cube tank. Okay, so the hardscape's in. We've got this lovely piece of dark moor root coming down to this rooty piece that goes into the substrate. Got some nice Syria rocks around the base. We can plant some epiphytes, some Buxcavalandra, um, Java ferns, Anubias in amongst the branches and the rocks. We're going to plant some carpeting plants at the front and some taller plants at the back nice simple layout and when it's fully grown in with lots of lush plants it's going to be really really nice Right, so we're going to start planting. We're going to start off with the foreground plants. So for that we're using um, Eleocaris acicularis persilla, which is a very short hair grass, which should hopefully create a nice lawn effect at the front here, give it a nice bright lush green colour. Um, so yeah, we're going to use our little aquascaping pin sets here and we're going to start planting. So we planted the Eleocaris in the front here. You can see one pot and we've covered the entire front there. We could have broken it down into smaller clumps, made it go even further, but um, we didn't need to. It's got a small area to do. Again, just one pot, a tropical one to grow. We've done the front. So now we're going to search for maybe some epiphyte plants and then we're going to go for a background plant as well. So one of the tanks here has been growing some amazing Anubius mini coin. See if you can see that under the light, which is a tiny, tiny Anubius. See the long roots on here. This has been growing for quite a long time. 
found its roots into the substrate and it's been growing for several months. But I've just taken a couple of um, rhizomes out of there, which I think is going to look great. And here, the small scale of the Anubias is really going to enhance the overall effect in this tank. We're looking for small size, small textures, um, which is going to look really great in this small aquarium. So the first thing we're going to do is remove most of these long roots. It won't, it won't damage the plant. If anything, it'll encourage it to grow. And we're also going to trim off this piece of rhizome here with no leaves on it. So we've got a more manageable clump of Anubius. So I may have to remove the light for this so I can get my hand in here. But we're going to look for like a wedge, a little crevice to wedge this um, Anubius in. So I'm just going to lift up the light briefly. Hopefully you can still see what's happening. And I think just in here is going to be great. You see we found that natural crevice in between the rock and the wood. This is kind of what we would do in nature. A rhizome might break off and float and just find a little nook to latch onto. So that'll go in there. We've got another little piece as well. I think this piece is going to look quite nice. Now, if these don't stay, you can use a little dab of um, aquascaping glue, which is cyanoacrylate super glue, and that's just going to hold that in place until it until it finds its roots and um, attaches itself naturally to the plant, to the uh, rock and the wood. Next, we've got this small trident fern, a little bit of moss still on there, which we're going to wedge into the wood here. Again, I'm going to remove the light so I can get to it. I think somewhere in this little hole here, it's going to be nice for this. Again, we may have to use some glue. I think that's going to look quite nice in there. I think um, this in the tank this size, Rotala rotundifolia green is going to be really nice at the back because what it does initially, as it grows, it starts creeping forwards. So if we plant it in this back corner here, we're going to get a lush, bright green growth of Rotala, which has got nice, small, needle-like leaves. And that's going to kind of creep forward and it can be trimmed to keep it in shape. You could even create a kind of curved bush at the back there but you can get a bit of height out of it and it's going to be nice and dense growth as well so i think uh, we're going to plant rotala rotundifolia green in the background so the same as the um the eleocaris who split up the pot into several different clumps quite small clumps about a centimeter or so and you can pinch the bottom in your pincettes and we're just going to spread that along the back you can plant it reasonably deep because you don't want all these floating up when you fill it with water because that can be a real pain to push them back down again. I mean, you probably will get some floaters, but it's not a big deal. But you just want to try and minimize that. So when you're planting, try to, if you spread them out evenly, so start on one side and then put another one in on the opposite corner and then fill in the middle and then just keep filling in the gaps as you go. That's going to ensure that the plants that you do have are evenly spaced in the space that you've got available for planting. <laughs> I prefer to plant dry. Um, if you, you can sort of put enough water in to cover the base, um, just to cover the substrate. Or some people just like to wet the substrate. But I prefer to do it dry. I feel it's neater, cleaner. It's just kind of easier to work with. And as long as you don't let the plants dry out when you're planting, there's, there's no issue. So I prefer to do it that way. So because we've got quite a lot of hardscape in here, I want a bit more greenery. So where this root's coming off here, I think layer of moss on the top of that it's going to look really nice it's going to give it that aged look 
So we're going to use uh, weeping moss, which is nice because it kind of grows down, which is going to give it that lovely kind of draped moss look. We're going to use moss scapers glue to attach this to the wood. You only need a tiny little dab of glue because it does dry white when it gets wet. So if this moss ever breaks away and drifts off, you're going to have some white glue marks there. So you want to minimize the amount of glue you use. Um, so again, I'm going to have to think remove the light or maybe we can put it back here yep that'll work so sorry it's not ideal but we're just going to put tiny tiny dab of glue push the moss onto it not too big a clump because it's only the bottom layer of moss that's going to stick to the wood so as this moss grows you'll be able to trim it down quite close to the wood and that's going to create a much more natural look when you first put it on when, when it's grown in these strands it kind of looks a bit scrappy um, but have some patience and it will start to look much more natural in no time but as long as you keep it nice and trimmed and short to the wood you shouldn't have any issues with it Okay, let's move the light forward so we can see a bit better again. There we go, it's starting to look really nice, I think. And once it grows in, it's going to be a lush underwater world, perfect for a little better fish. And there we have it, the Superfish Cube 15, uh, fully set up. So we've just used everything as is out of the box. We've got the Superfish Scaper LED, all comes in as a set. We've got the hang on the back filter, which is silent. I can't hear it, maybe a tiny bit of the odd pop of air just because it's brand new. Um, they do make a little bit of noise, brand new filters as the air kind of purges out of them, but that is silent as far as I can tell. Um, yeah, so hopefully when this grows in, when the customer is ready to pick it up, it's going to be nicely grown in. It's going to be a lovely, lush underwater world. And uh, I'm excited to see it develop. And um, I'll give you an update on it before the customer takes it away. Thanks for watching. It'd be awesome if you could subscribe to the channel, like the video, ask any questions in the comments. Um, I try to reply to every comment. So um, yeah, please do ask as many questions as you want to. And um, yeah, we'll see you in the next one.